Okay, so this question, um, it says to refer to as an example from your book, and this is the example from your book. Um, I'm just going to go over it to kind of give you an idea of um, what this problem looks like um, with audio as well as just visual and reading. So it says the center of two circles is 7 centimeters apart, one having a radius of 5 and the other having a radius of 3. Okay, so we start with a larger circle and then we have a smaller circle and they intersect one another. Okay. Alright, so they overlap. Um, the centers are seven centimeters apart, it says. So this full length is seven. Okay. Um, what we want to know is what's the area of their intersection. Okay. Now notice what we end up with there when they overlap. If we drew a straight line here. Remember we've talked about segments of circles, so if I drew the radius out to here, which this was my circle that had radius 5, and if I drew this out here, radius 5, notice here I get a sector, okay, and the part where they overlap, if we divide it there, notice what I get is the segment for that sector, okay. On the other side here, let me change my ink color, maybe that'll help it look a little better. Okay, so if I draw the sides of this, so where the, to where they intersect, this would be 3 because this is a circle of radius 3, and this would be 3. Okay, and again, notice what's cut out there. If I stop right here, it's a segment for this circle being cut off there. So what I have is the segment from each circle. If I add them together, then I'll get the area of their intersection there. Okay, so that is what I'm going to do. In order to do that, I have to know the measure of the angle here to find the area of this segment. And I need to know the measure of angle, this angle here to find the area of this segment. Now, in order to do that, we're going to make good use of this triangle that we formed. Um, because of symmetry, this, this line that connects their centers, the 7 centimeter line, um, it cuts those angles completely in half. So we're just going to have to look at one half of each angle. And then when we bring it back to the triangle, or excuse me, the circle, we'll just have to remember to double the angle again. Okay, so what I'm looking at here, this triangle I pulled off, is a triangle, just this top half is what I'm looking at here. Okay, so I know I have a 5, a 3, and then the distance between their centers here, a length of 7. Now, my goal here is to find the measure of this angle and this angle because, again, once I have the angle here, I can double it to find the full angle here. And when I have this angle here, I can double it to find this angle here, find the area of each of their segments, and then add them together. Notice I said segment and not sector. Okay. Well, let's first find the angles that we need. I'm going to label this triangle. It doesn't really matter how you label it. Um, just so long as they each have a letter. Um, now at this point I don't really need angle A so I'm going to go ahead and go find angle B. Right? I need the angles from the center of each circle. To do that I'm going to use the law of cosines. So I have the side opposite B is 5 squared. The other two sides are 3 and 7. Minus 2 times 3 times 7 times the cosine of angle B give me 25 equals 9 plus 49 minus 42 cosine B. Okay, I'm going to move everything to the left side of the equation except for the cosine. So subtract 9 and 49 and then divide by negative 42. So 25 minus 9 and minus 49 negative 33 divide by the negative 42 and I just have cosine B is negative 33 divided by negative 42 which negative divided by negative is positive we would then need to do the inverse cosine so that we can get B all by itself so my answer for B 
is the inverse cosine of 33 over 42. Okay, that gives me that angle B is 0.6669. Okay, so this angle here is 0.6669. All right, we also need to find angle C. So let's go ahead and find angle C. The side across opposite angle C is three. We go three squared equals those other two angles squared. So five squared and seven squared minus two times five times seven times the cosine of C. Okay, that gives me nine equals 25 plus 49 minus 70 cosine C. We're going to move everything to this left side. So for 9, we're going to go minus 25 minus 49, which gives me negative 65. And then we're going to divide by that negative 70. Once again, negative divided by negative makes that a positive. And we will do the inverse cosine of both sides to find our angle C. So angle C will be the inverse cosine of 65 over 70. Okay, so when I do that, I get that angle C is about... 0.38 radians. Okay, so over here, up here in our drawing, this is 0.38. Now remember, if we come back over here, and I'm going to go ahead and erase some of the markings that I had in there, some of the coloring and such. Okay, our original goal was to find the each of the segments at each end so that when we cut in set we want this segment and this segment so we needed this full angle now remember this was just half of the angle so now I'm going to take 2 times 0.38 to get my full angle in the center there and that gives me 0.76 Okay, I'm going to find the area of the segment for this circle, this part right here that's cut off when the circles intersect. The area of a sector is one half, excuse me, the segment, I keep saying that. The area of a segment is one half the radius squared times theta minus the sine of theta for your central angle there. So for this one, it would be one half times a radius of five squared times 0.76 minus the sine of 0.76. Alright, so 5 squared is 25. If we divide that by 2, we get 12.5. And in this, we get 0.76 minus the sine of 0.76 gives me 0.07107. I'm going to leave actually that full thing in my calculator and go times 12.5. Okay, so for this section, I get 0.888 as the area of the segment there. Let's do the same for the segment on this side that was created by this circle. Okay, so now we're doing this portion. Um, the angle that we found, angle B, was 0.6669, but remember that's only half of it. So we're going to go 2 times the 0.6669. And we get 1.3338 is the measure of that angle. So when we find the measure or the area of that segment, we do 1 half times the radius. This time is 3 squared times theta, which is 1.3338 minus the sine of theta, 
<clears throat> 3 squared gives me 9 divided by 2 is 4.5 out front here and 1.3338 minus the sine of 1.3338 gives me 0 0.362 about. Again, just leave that full thing in your calculator. The less rounding you do, the more exact your answer will be. So if you can just leave something in your calculator, just leave it. And I get about 0.1, or excuse me, 1.63 for that area. So the total area would be those two segments added together. That's where the circles overlap is those two segments. So I take the 1.63 and add to it the 0.888. And I get a total area of 2.518. Again, we found the two segments areas, added them together because those were the two spots where they overlapped and that's what they wanted to know, the area of their intersection.